If you never saw it before, you wouldn't believe it was real. Damn, chat. Why, why didn't y'all start looking like that? What the hell? Nah, because y'all seem to think I know everything like I'm a walking encyclopedia. But if I'm being honest here, I know what the f that was supposed to be like. I had to go in the comments for this. And apparently, that's not a deformity. That's actually what they're supposed to look like. Ew. It's a Damascus goat. It originated in Middle East countries and is primarily used for meat and milk. That man look like is not happy. Oh my God, that skull is disgusting. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say God makes mistakes, but that skull makes me think his draft and post buttons are way too close to each other. Also, a Damascus named God won a prize for most beautiful goat in a contest in 2008. How? Proving that some of y'all would lie unprovoked for no reason. How? Y'all can call him beautiful, but tell me this goat thing crawl straight out the goonies. They actually look somewhat normal as babies. But then I guess puberty hits them like Hiroshima. <laughs> it's honestly the pug of goats, and I truly mean that. And I read some comments on the internet saying, oh, he just wants love. I rebuked that. He wants my life essence. We played God with goats. Now we got Barnyard and Dark Souls, and I do. Bro, bro, what? come on now. Come on now, bro. What the hell is this? Not like it. And I could have sworn Satan took the form of a goat. Actually, this makes a lot of sense now. You know y'all don't got to tag me in every animal video, because like, like, what do you expect me to say? Like, his existence looks like pain. And for y'all that are gonna sit there and tell me that he actually looks cute, I pay way too much for context for y'all to lie about what's in front of my face. Crazy thing is, this is the second most disturbing goat video I've ever seen. The crazy thing is, is you keep going to this big, this big booty goat in my face, bro. Get this, get this buns out my face, okay? Hello. Why that nigga Absolutely. looking at me like that? And known ah! creature gives a New Yorker a heart attack. I both can and got cannot- got the virus? <laughs> no! <laughs> Yo, that's top tier commentary. That man said it got the virus. Wow. <laughs> Fully explain what that is. It's called a Kalugo, but it's also known as a flying lemur, even though there's somehow two lies in that one name. They don't fly, they glide. And since they spend Ew. most of their lives in their trees, they basically just airdrop themselves from Ew. branch to branch. And it's not a lemur. Lemurs are primates, making them related to gorillas, chimps, and us. But this thing isn't a primate. Whoever named it would probably name an atheist faith. They use that stretchy membrane called a patagium to glide like- You're gonna stop showing this man's bare skin to me. I'm not trying to see his one centimeter, Peter. I'm not trying to see his, his, his rib cage. I'm not trying to see none of that. Like flying squirrels, and they can travel 650 feet without stopping. That's 200 meters or a little bit less than two football fields. But it's not a flying squirrel. There was a time people thought they were just God's rough draft of a bat, but Kalugos aren't related to bats either. And if you look at the order they're in, Dermoterra, they're the only living members. It's like pulling up to a family reunion and finding out you're the only one left. And because their entire personality involves flying, they're too slow and awkward to survive on the ground. And for an animal that lives in the trees, they're pretty mid climbers. They're so bad at life that they being nocturnal is probably the only thing keeping them alive. They Other look mid as hell. Carry their babies everywhere for the first six months, which made some people believe it was a marsupial, like some type of deformed air koala. But it's none of those things. So what the f is it? Well, scientists perform genetic analyses on them, basically a 23andMe for a flying carpet, and it turns out their closest evolutionary relative are primates. It's pretty much the closest you can get to. This thing is the closest thing you can get to a monkey. Look at this. It, it literally is. This is literally like one chromosome away from a gorilla. Remember that, guys. This is how close we are to each other. This guy, if he would've got an extra chromosome somewhere else, he's a gorilla. I miss without actually being one. Which means this dehydrated Dollar Tree chipmunk is more related to you than it is to an actual squirrel or bat. The more you know. Anyone know what this Here's is? why you should never touch this. That is Glaucus atlanticus. It's a type of nudibranch, but it's also known as a sea slug. It's also a gastropod mollusk. That's I'm not going to cool. bore you with a whole biology lesson, but gastropod means it's related to snails, and a mollusk means it pulls up to the same cookout as octopus, squid, and cuttlefish. Okay. Also, touching one like this is a creative way of saying you want to pay more for health insurance. Why? Because these slugs will eat venomous saphonophores like the Portuguese man of war and steal its venom to use to handle its own light work. It stores the venom in its tissue, so if a predator or a person gets too close, they'll get fixed. Man, man, if I, I'm telling you, if I get murked by something like this, I deserve to go. If I am in the water... And some beautiful, majestic creature like this gets on me, and I'm done. I think, I think that was my fault, personally. Fifty shades of around and find out. Do I cuss too much? Like, I know kids watch me, but then again, they watch Family Guy before fourth grade, so I don't even know anymore. And just like the Portuguese Cerro Scuffle, the Glaucus can still hand out painful life lessons even after its soul's already ascended. Basically, they don't need to be alive to put you in the hospital. So if what? you see one on the beach, it's definitely a look, but don't touch. Because if anything's that small and that colorful, there's probably a good reason they don't need to hide. Exhibit A. 
This blue vibe check can be found off the coast. So you're telling me this nigga dead and he's still killing people in his sleep? See, I, I hate niggas who just take people Africa to the grave. And European waters off the east coast of Australia because Australia and some have even been found in the Gulf. Not of gonna lie, I'm. Out They're also hit. hermaphrodites that mate by sword fighting and stabbing each other. Normally in nature, the winner gets the female, but here the loser becomes one. The more you know. Here's a story of how 76 beavers were parachuted into Idaho, and yes, that is what? a thing that happened. So in the 1940s, the people of Idaho had beef with the bucktooth beaver population. These beavers braver than me. They braver than me. I never, I so never. Because their habit of taking down trees was causing floods in people's yards and damage to gardens. But because beavers actually contribute to society, unlike some of the people complaining about them, the government decided that instead of squad wiping them, it would just be better to move them to another area code. The only problem was the moving process for beavers involved putting them in boxes and Ubering them <laughs> via horses and mules. This was the 40s. There was no beaver U-Haul. These boxes would overheat and the beavers would become so stressed that they would refuse to eat and the horses and mules carrying them eventually got pressed too. It was a bad time for everyone involved. So they realized they had to get creative. And apparently creative meant tying the boxes to parachutes from World War II and literally airdropping them into the Idaho wilderness. But of course, you can't just eat a beaver out of a plane without being sure you weren't just committing beaver slaughter with extra steps. So, so they experimented the best and safest ways to drop beavers from a plane and the test subject they used was an old been around the block beaver named Geronimo. And they could just chuck the beaver in there and send- what? What the fuck? You really can't make this up. After using old man Geronimo to figure out the perfect height and area to drop the beavers, it was time. August 14th, 1948 Did he survive? Was 76 beavers were loaded into crates and flown in a twin engine where they skydived to their new home. And these furry paratroopers had a 99% success rate. But only because one of the beavers managed to escape and jump out of the box when he was 76 feet from the ground and took himself off the census no. when he met the ground. No, Other than that, bro. the rest of the Air Force beavers managed to <laughs> land safely on the ground and were able to crawl out the box and explore the new neighborhood and begin a new beaver life. And to most people, this was a success. PETA wasn't happy about it, but you know, PETA gone PETA. Also, it turns out each parachuting beaver cost taxpayers about seven bucks a beaver, so I'd say it worked out pretty well. Today, we have better ways to control the beaver population, but something about 76 beavers being air- I kind of see- I kind of want to see, uh, like, 70 niggas get dropped out of the uh, airplane. I feel like that'd be an interesting sight. 70 oh, beavers? Like, like I know they are so shook. They're like, where, where's my family at? Like, like, where is my mom? Y'all just, where, where are we at? It just brings me joy. One of my favorite all-time animal facts was that the CIA once tried to weaponize otters for some reason, because the 60s were a weirder, druggier time, I guess. But they were low-key on the... I'll weaponize... I don't even want to talk about what I'll weaponize. I'll just let y'all know. I, I do some shit. Oh, I'll, I'll do some ish, bro.